Hey everybody, it's Father Tony here, and we are doing a special recording of Talk Gnosis, uh, because I realized uh, a little while back that you guys have never really met Jonathan. I mean, you know Jonathan from, uh, you know, the show and everything, and his uh, Facebook and, and all of his fun, uh, you know, uh, quizzes that he writes for his job and all that stuff. I'm sure you've seen him post a million times. But we've never really talked to him about his journey and how he came to Gnosticism and all that stuff. So uh, let's do that now. So Jonathan, hello, and uh, welcome to your very own special show. Oh, thank you, Father Tony. You, you can't imagine how excited I am to talk about myself for 20 minutes. Uh, this is going to be the best <laughs> talk notes this episode yet. So, Well, if it's anything pretty... as excited about how I would be if I were talking about myself for 20 minutes, then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we do talk about, we, we are, you and I, and, and probably many listeners and watchers of shows are spiritual people who try to be um, humble and good in the world. But at the same time, like, you know, I'm a seminarian, you're a priest, I'm trying to start a church in Montreal. There is a, There must be a certain level of narcissism yeah. <laughs> involved of our spiritual journeys, right? I think so. You know, it's, yeah. it's like one of those things where you're like, well, uh, the thing I want doesn't exist, so... I guess I'm the guy who's going to have to do it. You know, it's just that kind of a... <laughs> exactly. Which is also, you know, the, the, all the great work that you, you've done with Gnostic Wisdom, right? It's like it doesn't really exist. So uh, go out there and build it. Um, so let's, let's move away from narcissism just say it's self-confidence. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's start right off. Um, I'm going to totally crib this from Gordon White, but it's a great starting question. So uh, let's do it. So, Jonathan, were you a weird kid? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure people who know me or meet me now are definitely like, that guy was a weird kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was uh, lonely, I was bullied, um, I was um, lost myself in, in comic books and imagination. Uh, I was a biter. Um, later on, like, you know, that was more when I was a little kid, but that kind of gets imprinted on one. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, I, I actually... You know, kind of found my niche. I actually, uh, I was a very yappy kid. I actually had a teacher pay me money uh, to be quiet all day. <laughs> that happened in grade two. That's uh, that's some efficient uh, uh, employment right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, later on, I, I did kind of find my niche. You know, I kind of quieted it down, and I became. Uh, uh, a voracious reader, and I got my circle of friends, and you know, I was sort of a quiet kid for like late elementary, junior high. Then I kind of blossomed in high school. I actually had, you know, a lot of people like me kind of had rough high school experiences where I, where I really had a, an amazing high school experience. So I did kind of, I was lucky to have, kind of have that journey where I was a weird kid who stayed weird but found my niche. Mm. No, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So uh, moving on, so you, um, you went to college, right? What did you go to college for? Uh, I went to college for religious studies. Uh, I went in uh, St. Mary's uh, University, which is in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, I grew up in a, on a small island on the east coast of Canada. Uh, and then I went to a slightly larger province in Canada <laughs> called Nova Scotia for college, to a slightly larger city called Halifax. Um, Halifax and is delightful. Yes, yes, it's wonderful. It's and it's not it's not that small. It's the biggest city in in the Maritimes, and I highly recommend our uh, listeners and watchers to check it out. It, it's a wonderful place to visit. Yeah. Uh, they actually have a lot of arts and cultures there. There's four or five universities, uh, which is a lot for a small town. So mm -hmm. it brings in a lot of uh, brings in a lot of vitality. Uh, and there's also an organic natural art scene there. Uh, um, and there's like a lot of good music, and a lot of good bands, and a lot of good food, and the people are very, very friendly. It's kind of a shock, kind of leaving that culture and going anywhere else. You know, we're actually now when I go back to visit, I, I kind of get creeped out because you know when when you kind of move to a to a larger place where you know people aren't as friendly. When you go back to a friendlier place, it's like, are you, what do you? Why are you smiling at me? Why are you talking to me? Do you want something from me? Do you want my money? Are you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's actually an adjustment to go home sometimes. Yeah, uh, what was uh, what was religious studies like? Did did you have a particular focus, or uh, was it more general? Oh, it was great, and, and we'll go back. We'll backtrack a little bit because uh, I'm not talking about how great Halifax is or how weird of a kid I am. It's supposed to be spiritual journey, right? <laughs> so uh, from from a young age, um, I had a very positive um, interaction with the church. Uh, you sometimes people who come to Gnosticism do not. Mm -hmm. Church of Canada, uh, right? Yeah, it's United Church of Canada. It, it's a very uh, liberal, left-leaning, uh, friendly place. 
uh, in the Protestant tradition. Uh, I had a kind of a wonderful childhood there. My immediate family wasn't that religious. I think my parents are just like, what do you do with kids on a Sunday morning instead of the Sunday school? That's kind of programmed into them. They weren't, you know, uh, they, they kind of lean agnostic, but uh, I kind of embrace it a little bit harder than them. Uh, so I was, I was kind of uh, quite religious growing up. Uh, I really liked uh, the United Church. Um, and I, I believe, I, you know, I was kind of all over the place, but I did start religious studies as I was. One of my options was uh, maybe becoming a, a minister in that tradition. Mm -hmm. So and, and religious studies, of course, is secular. It's more like anthropology, but it's a good undergrad to do if you're going to do, you know, a, a master's in divinity or theology. Mm -hmm. uh, from a very young age, you know, I, I, I wasn't one of those kids. I was very imaginative, but I, but I wasn't one of those kids having kind of Blakey visions of angels, right? <laughs> right. Uh, but I did I did feel a, an intimacy and a strong connection to the, to the divine and could feel that divine presence as a young child. Uh, and um, when I was way too young, I found Gnosticism. So again, I was a, kind of a geeky kid, so I found Philip K. Dick. Mm -hmm. um, I was a geeky, I was already a religion geek when I was young, so I was finding the Christian mystical tradition. Mm -hmm. How, how um, young so, are we talking here? Uh, I would say, you know, like, if you're like a sci-fi nerd, you're, you're reading it at age 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was finding, I was reading Philip K. Dick books when I was 12, 13, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I was reading some some Christian mysticism by then as well, um, and I started meditating. I think when I was fourteen, um, I was uh, I was kind of interested in this experiential aspects of the divine, which uh, I always I, I say this a lot on the show because I, I love the United Church. I might even start going back there on Sunday mornings along with my Gnostic work. But it's 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 a left leaning sort of liberal social justice church, so mm -hmm. it, there's not a lot of emphasis on direct connections to the divine. Right. Yeah. So I, I was hanging out with uh, basically a, um, a spiritualist, theosophical influence group, um, and I started meditating with them. And then, you know, they talked a lot about kind of experiencing spirit for yourself. Uh, I had a summer job with them. Uh, I cut the lawn and I was uh, looking for ghosts. That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually got paid to look for ghosts. <laughs> 14 or, or 15. Um, yeah, and I was reading Gnosticism, not really understanding it, right? Reading the Christian mystical tradition, not really understanding it. But oh, I love talking about myself. Uh, <laughs> so so religious studies, I had kind of two plans, right? One was may, maybe I will become a uh, minister in the United Church, or maybe I will become a great Gnostic scholar, right? I'll go into academia. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love this Gnosticism stuff. And even at that early age, I think I was 16, 17, like I knew uh, Bishop uh, Heller was, was, and I knew about the, um, the Gnostic revival of the 1800s, mm -hmm. but I thought that they were even smaller than they are and that it was mostly over. I will never find a Gnostic church. It's basically a dead tradition. So I'll just have to kind of do it myself in my room and maybe I can study and, and teach it professionally. Well, but when you were 16, that was kind of true, right? I mean, yeah. there was pretty much just uh, Bishop Heller and Bishop uh, Miller in uh, in Palo yes. Alto, and that was pretty much it in the United States. That was it, yeah. And of course, I was in small town East Coast Canada. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, this was like this was the internet age. But you know, I started university in 1999, right? So we're we're just on the cusp here. Yeah. Um, and uh, talk about myself, love myself. Anyway, it turns out that uh, I love academia, but uh, I'm most certainly not cut out for a PhD. <laughs> 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 um, so, you know, I got my undergrad and uh, futzed around in Halifax and I played in a band and I did some religious uh, experimenting, as I said, again, not saying I'm in United Church, great tradition, but I was going there, but, oh, I, you know, I need this more meditation training, I need this direct experiential stuff. Uh, there's a lot of Buddhists in Halifax, so, you know, I was meditating with them and I was checking out the Unitarians. Um, uh, and uh, going to to some different some different traditions. Um, then I moved to Montreal to study social work. Uh, I decided that you know uh, the, I'm not really cut out for ministry. I'm not definitely not cut out for academia. Um, uh, I dropped out a social work program. I was actually in a school shooting, uh, and that kind of changed the uh, the timber of the program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people dropped out. I didn't really want to come back to class after that. So. Um, Montreal is kind of a place where young people go to retire. The cost of living is quite uh, cheap here. Mm -hmm. So I kind of putzed around in my 20s. Um, as I got closer to 30, I started feeling that that call uh, to, to come back to religion. I was popping up at the United local United Church here in the mornings. wasn't taking it too seriously. But I started hearing the divine uh, 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 calling me again. So I went looking. Um, 
Uh, my grandfather was a mason, and I thought, well, you know, I, and, and, and again, I, I, the whole time I've been interested in esoterica and Gnosticism, uh, not really realizing that it was that what I considered the second great restoration after the one in the 1800s was, was going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had Googled around in 1999 and it decided that, oh, okay, that's it, it's over. Was um, it even Google really. in 99? Was it like oh, Lycos or Hotbot or something? Yeah, Alta Vista, or maybe I was asking Jeeves. <laughs> So, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, so I was still reading this stuff, still thinking about this stuff, you know, still kind of working into my personal spiritual life. Um, uh, but yeah, looking for, for a way to grow, knowing that, uh, as much as I love the Eastern traditions and Buddhism, that, uh, it's, it's, it's the West and it's Christ and it's something biblically based. It's something in the Abrahamic traditions that I, that simple set, I just can't lose it. I can't shake it. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying that it's right <laughs> or 100% true, uh -huh. but it's a symbol set that I, I just can't shake. So I don't know if it's because of the programming in as a, when I was a child or my soul or what it is. So um, so yeah, so I thought about masonry and I because uh, my grandfather was a mason uh, and I met with the masons and I'm not saying masonry, but I'm like, well, I like my granddad a lot, but I don't want to hang out with a whole bunch of copies of him, right? <laughs> Oil chicken. Uh, I was googling around, um, and I'm like, oh, well, and I found Martinism, which, uh, which again, I had read about when I was younger, and I had assumed that, that they were all gone. Uh, and it kind of threw Martinism from googling around more as as I uh, started with Martinism, wanting to know more about it. I found stuff like uh, your lecture on uh, a cult of personality and Martinism. I'm like, what a father, Tony Sylvia, who's in a the, the apostolic <laughs> jo Joanite church, and oh, there's there's an act of Gnostic Church, and there's a bunch of active Gnostic churches. Uh, and then I started uh, emailing you and Von Senior Lance, and just you know emailing you every week and bothering you. And then uh, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here you are. No, it's uh, yeah. that's a good story, um, and I think probably mirrors an awful lot of the people uh, watching and listening. You know, there's uh, there are a lot of people who who did that same kind of, uh, you know, shopping at the God Mall, as I like to call it, you know, and they look around and they say, oh, you know, this thing is really cool, but it doesn't exist anymore. Or, you know, it's too weird and nobody, would, you know, nobody wants to do it. Or, And that's, you know, that's unfortunate, um, but it still is kind of the case in, in a lot of instances that, you know, uh, it, we we don't have churches in most of the world. You know, we don't have Gnostic churches in most of the world. And so people who want to be a Gnostic in, you know, South Africa or <laughs> India or any number of places, you know, that's a, that's a tall order, really. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I agree. So that's, uh, and then that's, that's, you know, that, that's why the work of Gnostic Wisdom Network is important, right? Uh, we are getting uh, this information out there and, and we can have a bit of an online community uh, mm -hmm. for those people who, who don't have, uh, have that connection, don't have a local Gnostic church. And, and again, I'm always careful to say I'm not slamming. And I did do some exploring, you know, I hung around with pagans yeah. and I went to this and I went to that and I went to the Hindu thing. And, and I'm not slamming those other traditions in my, in my view, I, they are all equally valid. It, but there's some stuff it's it's like poetry right it's like your favorite band it's like a composer that you like right uh right. there's something that's going to sing to your soul and uh for me it was it was most certainly gnosticism and you know i i had a, a good 20 years in the back of my mind being like if i found a gnostic church i'd be i'd sign up in a minute um <laughs> And, you know, unfortunately, I found a great one, you know, uh, the, the AJC has been very good to me. And, and I did join the seminary about a year ago. And part of the reasons I did that was um, was I, I wanted to I felt like I almost like owed a debt to the AJC because they had shown me so much kindness uh, that I wanted to reflect that kindness back to somebody else who will need it in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so hopefully that that journey will continue, and I will be able to to pay that debt and, and return that uh, pay it forward and return that kindness. Yeah, that's cool. I want to tell the story about when you and I met uh, yes. in New York, um, yeah, because that was fun. Uh, I had a um, uh, for those of you who don't know, and I'm going to turn it into a story about me now. So. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so I, I had a, uh, originally a nonprofit in New York called Gnostic NYC. Um, I wasn't yet doing uh, St. Martin's Parish yet because we, what we had planned to do was kind of use Gnostic NYC to um, 
you know, kind of as an entry point to uh, the Joannite Church and what was the Alexandria Gnostic Church at the time, which no longer exists. And uh, <clears throat> and Jonathan found us online, and uh, and he, um, because of his wife's work, traveled to New York on occasion. And uh, he was coming to New York, and he sent me an email and uh, and said, "Hey, uh, I'm coming to New York. Let's let's hang out." <clears throat> and so I <laughs> I looked him up on Facebook and all that stuff, and I'm like. What does this sixteen-year-old kid want to do with, you know, with the huge glasses? <laughs> want to come and hang out with me for? This is weird. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So what we met? We met at a bakery, uh, yep. I think it was, and uh, yeah, and we chatted for what an hour and a half, and yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was great, and I <clears throat> I knew right away. I said I'm going to get along with this guy, and and, uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun together, and. <laughs> and I think we have, and we will You're continue psychic. to do you so. You can see into the future. That, no, that, that's exactly how I felt, too. Also, if, if Miguel, if Miguel, if you're watching or listening, it was very cold that day. It was the middle of winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lawful but frigid dystopia of New York City. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, you mentioned Buddhism, and I know that um, you have dabbled, uh, yes. as they say, in Buddhism. We've talked about it on the show on occasion. Um, what is your Buddhist uh, experience? You, you mentioned that you did some Buddhist training when you were, uh, when you were shopping around. Uh, how, what did, what were you doing? What, what kind of meditation were you doing? And how has that continued to inform your own spiritual practice? Yes, uh, and it is an important part of of my perspective and and, and uh, spirituality. And like a lot of Gnostics, you know, with Gnosticism, sometimes we have to fill in the blanks. Uh, and um, you will often find Gnostics resorting to kind of buddhist -y concepts and sometimes even language yeah. to fill in those blanks and to explain things to people. Um, and kind of the, the whole Western tradition, something like Centering Prayer, uh, which you and I are, are both big fans of, it's, it's definitely Buddhist influence, right? Sometimes the contemplative and meditative practices of the West, there's a bit of a break in the tradition, so we use Buddhism to fill that in. Um, uh, for Buddhism, uh, I, I am fortunate uh, in, on the East Coast, it's become the new Dharma center of the world. Uh, <laughs> there's a Tibetan tradition called uh, Shambhala Buddhism, uh, uh, um, brought to the West by a man named Chagun Trungpa, who was a, uh, you know, an important reincarnated uh, Lama and Rinpoche, uh, who had studied extensively in Tibet and then had actually fled Tibet on Fush. Uh, from the invading communists. Uh, and he felt like he had been given a mission to bring the Dharma to the West. Um, he uh, decided to set up in Halifax, Nova Scotia in the 80s, which I think kind of flabbergasted all of his followers. <laughs> but he, he was looking for, for a place, you know, that was that was kind of civilized, but maybe a little uh, isolated, but, you know, had all the modern anemones. I mean, I, I don't know, I can't read the man's mind, but he, mm -hmm. he had felt a call to Halifax and uh, him and, and uh, many of his hundreds of his followers uh, moved there. Uh, and um, you know, Chagun Trungpa has been, um, has pa passed away of the long time ago now, but his son is sort of uh, uh, leading up the lineage and, uh, you know, he has, he travels quite a bit, but he has his, his kind of Dharma seat in Halifax. So just to, to have this, this, it's quite powerful and quite amazing that this small maritime uh, city has a strong connection to this, this very uh, powerful and pure and, and wonderful Buddhist lineage. Um, so I had studied with them. Um, I had done Shambhala kind of breaks things up to, into what, what they call levels, you know, so I had done some of the lower levels. Uh, through them, I, I had just gotten sort of a grasp of the Buddhist perspective, Buddhist terminology, and basic meditation. So uh, a lot of what, when I say basic meditation, should be familiar to many of our, our, uh, our watchers and listeners of, uh, of, you know, of, of sitting with, with your mind and using your, your breath as your anchor. Um, Tibetan Buddhism can get kind of funky on sort of the higher levels or higher degrees to use sort of Western terminology, but I haven't really, you know, gone into that stuff. Uh, my wife is is a Buddhist in that tradition, uh, as are, of course, my in-laws. Um, uh, and I probably will on my spiritual journey. You know, right now I'm pretty busy and Gnosticism is kind of my jam, but there is a lot of knowledge and spiritual technology. Uh, I hate that term, but it, it gets <laughs> across well. 
uh, spiritual technology in that tradition. So I think I will explore it further in, in the future. And it's something that, you know, my wife and I can do together. Um, so I, I probably will embrace Buddhism a little bit more. But, if, you know, for the meantime, I've got an awful lot to do with Gnostic wisdom and with the HAC and with the local Narfex and with Martinism. So, uh, so hopefully if I can kind of, uh, you know, get a handle on that, then uh, I'll go deeper into those into those studies. But I'm glad I found it. And as I said, it's, it's not my path or my primary path. Path, but I have a lot of respect for it, and uh, it's definitely influenced the way that, that I think and see the world. And there's, it does have a lot to do uh, with, with with Gnosticism and the Gnostic perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm stealing this quote, but you know, Gnosticism is paranoid Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> it's also sometimes called the Buddhism of the West, and yada yada. And of course, uh, uh, sorry, what's uh, Father uh, Monsignor Stratford's uh, infamous quote that, that we like a lot? It's a uh, Christian on the outside, Buddhist on the inside, quotes a lot of dead Greek guys. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so last question then before we wrap up here, uh, and, and, uh, and then I'll give you the final word here. What, what, uh, what does your spiritual practice look like today? Well, that, that's something else that, I, that I've got to work on. I hypothetically do have a daily practice. Um, and that's... Uh, as that's hypothetically do we all. <laughs> as hypothetically do we all. So um, something that's really important that, that, I, that I've got to add into my spiritual practice. And, you know, I like to feel that through the narthex, I'm doing that. But just getting out and volunteering a little bit more because... Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's something I want to do a little bit uh, more of. Um, but hypothetically, my, my, my daily practice is uh, um, simple sitting meditation, um, uh, you know, kind of focusing on the breath, um, kind of just to start, start off. Um, then either centering prayer or inner alchemy. Um, inner alchemy as taught by a friend of the show, Greg Kaminsky. Mm -hmm. from a cult of personality. Uh, that's hypothetically what I, what I do in the morning, uh, and then hypothetically at night before bed, uh, some more kind of esoteric, um, you know, what, what I like to call my voodoo, though it's not actually voodoo, it's what I say to my wife. You know, I have a separate room in the house. It's like, I'm going to go do my voodoo now, honey. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, stuff, stuff that's a little bit more funky, but not too funky, but kind of, you know, more Martinist stuff. Uh -huh. So, you know, kind of setting up the altar um, and... Uh, um, uh, doing that. Um, obviously, the the logo service. So I, I usually do the logo service in the evening. That's usually part of my part of my voodoo, uh, as I like to call it. Uh, and of course, the logo service is sort of the the bedrock uh, of service uh, uh, for uh, for the AJC and for for laity, and it can be performed both publicly and and privately. And uh, you can read it for yourself in the excellent book Sanctuary of the Sacred Flame. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you can. Uh, remember to post a PDF, I'm sure, in the uh, description. Yeah, so that's hypothetically my, my daily practice. But if I sleep in or there's some really good TV in the evening, <laughs> um, then, uh, then uh, that I miss out on, on that. So I've really just got to get to. And that actually sounds like a lot, but, you know, some meditating in the morning, you know, sometimes that is just like 15, 20 minutes, right? And mm -hmm. as you know, it's, it's, it's not that. It's a, you, I guess you could hypothetically take a long time to do the logo service but it's relatively brief so yeah. um yeah all right uh anything else that uh that you think that we should know about you that we didn't talk about I think I have bored people enough. <laughs> uh, I did. I, you know, I think it's really funny because, of course, I, I like hearing about people's spiritual journeys. Uh, and, you know, when, when I go to Conclave, uh, when we get to talk to guests or when I talk to, to priests and seminarians of the HAC, I, I always like to ask, well, what's your Gnostic origin story? You know, kind of like a comic book or something. I find it quite interesting. Right. What I have learned in life is that nobody cares about your spiritual journey, <laughs> the dreams you had last night, or your sex life. Those are like the three <laughs> things nobody like wants to hear about. They'll pretend that they're interested, but uh, especially not so at the same time. Yes, yeah, definitely not at the same time. Yeah, so I'm passing that that nugget on. You know, please, uh, if, if people do feel bored when you're explaining your spiritual journey to them, we'll we'll listen. We find it quite interesting. <laughs> That is true. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Jonathan, for um, for doing this little interview. Thank you for being a host and producer of Talk Gnosis. Uh, I really appreciate all the work that you do. And, um, you know, it, the show wouldn't be nearly as big or exciting or interesting uh, without you. So I personally appreciate your work very much. And, and I'm glad to know you. And uh, I look forward to many more years of all this fun, geeky religion stuff with you. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, right. perfect. So then, uh, everybody else, we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye.